that it will be a second collection for world missions. It will take both collections at the same time. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and the auction will be available to assist you. Thank you in advance. Good morning. A very warm welcome to Our Lady of Africa, Paris. The fear of God leads us towards embracing God's love and truth. Fear possesses great power, capable of driving us to either panic and flee, or to instill faith and inspire action. The fear of God serves as a remedy to the fear of losing one's life. It is a deep reverence to the Creator who crafted us with love and continues to support us with mercy and kindness. A wholesome fear of God promotes spiritual growth, wisdom, and sound judgment liberating us from the shackles of sinful pride, deceit, and cowardice, particularly in the presence of evil, falsehood, and deception. At today's Mass, we say special prayers to Nick Young and Joyce Rain. Please stand and welcome our ministerial team for today's Holy Mass and join us in our gathering song, hymn number 626, in the Lead Me Guiding Hymnal, I've Decided to Make Jesus My Choice.
And so for the many times when we dishonor God, 
and make the king drunk in his service, opening the doors before him and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen one, I will call you by your name, give you a title, though you know me not. The beginning of the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians, and God to the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, 
remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance and hope of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before our God and Father, knowing brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the many times you've helped this person out, the many hours you've spent cleaning up their problems. And when your friend gets to the other side, they act like you don't even exist. It was like it was their own efforts. And when they start thanking people, they thank everyone but you. I'm sure you would feel some kind of way that no good soul is so grateful. Four other things you can say. To not acknowledge the fruit of your labor is what we find in the same gospel reading. For the text translated into, from the Greek, is a little more clear, word for word, because it states, give what is of Caesar to Caesar, and what is of God to God. But here is the problem of today. We give what is of God to Caesar. And we give what is of Caesar to God. Let me break it down this way. There are people who break down their lives into money. And they say, time is money. Pay me my work. And if they are not paid, they don't do anything. Everything is transaction. They say, I have this kind of degree. That means that I should make this amount of money because that's what I'm worth. And so they place themselves and their value in terms of money. And so when we get out of college or university and we have to look for a job, and sometimes it's not in our field, we find jobs that are way less than what we should be earning. And you feel a certain type of way because I'm worth more than that. When we place a monetary value on ourselves and base our feelings of worth and self-esteem on how much we earn, our priorities are out of whack. It becomes a problem when you can be bought. When someone weighs an amount of money in front of you, and that determines your motivation. This is what it means when we render what is of God to Caesar. When we realize that we have been called by God, called by a new name, and given a purpose, a title, position, status that has been handed and planned out for you since the dawn of creation by the Creator who made you, fashioned you, knit you together in your mother's womb, from whom, through whom, and to whom all things belong, God has destined your creation for a specific purpose in God's design. And when you step into your purpose, when you put yourselves in God's purpose, then that means that you step into your ministry. When you put yourselves under the yoke of what you are worth in money, this is slavery. What is God calling us to? He's calling us to a higher purpose. And for that to be achieved, you need to reorder your thinking. Because money cannot define your purpose. But money can be the fuel to achieve your purpose. But not the end value of your achievement. When you step into your purpose, your life becomes a life of service and a life of ministry. And what you do with your money furthers your ministry to others. This Sunday, the church celebrates all those who are working in the missions. Mission 
Sunday. But I would submit to you today that in this world we live in, we are all called to be missionaries. Because our world today is in need of witnesses to Jesus' salvation. And not just for this world and an off the world place, a developing world country in Africa and Far East and South America, but right here in this neighborhood. You don't need to go somewhere else to be a missionary to God's people because if you really recognize it, mission territory is here, right in this neighborhood, right in this community. And you realize that people are starving for life giving water that only Jesus can provide. And we have to be the fuel that Jesus uses, the fuel that leads others to Christ. The Apostle Paul, the first missionary to the Gentiles, exclaimed that his life is being poured out like a libation. This is 2 Timothy. His purpose in this life was to empty himself of himself so that Christ could be his all and all. This is our calling as children of the living God to spend our lives in service and church our work is not done. This past week our church was a part of a three day revival and I must hand it to all of those who went and made this a uh, wonderful, wonderful event. We have Gardas Hall, where Gardas? He's the president of the Black Athens Alliance. Amen. We have Tina Carter, who I know is watching via, via the live stream, probably in Nice and in France. Amen. But we were all blessed to have the second night of the revival here. Amen? Amen. And the father showed up. Uh -huh. And the maestro, wherever he is, he showed up too. Amen. The Holy Spirit was in the building. But I want to point out something to you about that night. And not only that night, it's something that is happening in this church. Something is shifting. And I'm not the only one to notice it. Because people are coming up to me and saying the same thing. So it's not just in my head. And it's not just wishful thinking on my part. God is truly doing something in this place. And a transformation is happening. Because we had a dream, but now we have a vision. And not only do we have a vision, God has given us a plan. And the vision is this. We are going to be a spiritual battery for this community. And that something is happening, and it's happening right now. And the engine is red. Oh, I'm excited. Amen. So when we speak of our future, we can speak of a sure hope. Because our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but only lean on Jesus' name. We are building the kingdom right here and right now. And as we pour ourselves out in service to this community, as we partner with other charities to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to educate those most in need, to make a difference in this community. And as we do this, more and more people in the surrounding community gets to know us, gets to see us, and begins to have a lasting and impactful, meaningful relationship with the people in this room. Because this is what it means to be a Christian. You're not meant to stay, do nothing. You are called to be Christ in this world. And that is our mission. If Jesus looked at you and someone were to ask, what image is inscribed on that person's soul? 
I hope that they don't see a dollar sign. Our lives and our works should look like the image of our Creator, whose children we are. And our lives are built in His currency, should be spent in fueling the engine of a spiritual battle, a battery in our lives, in our church, in our community, so that we live and breathe purpose. That is our vision, and that is our plan. And the patroness of our parish, the Blessed Virgin Mary, has charged us all with our marching orders. Do whatever he tells you. And what has Jesus told us to do? He says, whatever you have done for the least of these, you have done it for me. Do whatever he tells you. He told us love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no person than this than to lay down your life for a friend. You, oh, no, you are no longer slaves. For the slave does not know what the master is doing. I have called you friends if you do what I command. Love one another because we need each other. We need one another as the body of Christ. And as a community, we will keep the spiritual battery going with our prayers, our devotions, our service, so that our spiritual engine is going to bring life to this community. <laughs> I like that sound, amen. amen. All we have to do is lift Jesus up as we lay down our lives our agendas till he speaks through eternity. He says, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, 